You are now listening to the podcast for geeks and the stuff they love, where each week we'll talk about everything from anime to movies, games, and prop collecting with the people who create and love it. I'm Jeremy. I'm Vince. I'm James. And this is your Geek Fix. I think the thing that attracted me to playing Fallout was the world building. I love building things, and when it came to the retro punk style of the Fallout props, I was excited to get my hands on them and make them function in the way that they did in the Fallout universe. Particularly the Pip-Boy, a wrist-mounted computer device with a green glowing screen and built-in radio and Geiger counter. I especially love the Pip-Boy 2000 kit that was made by the Wand Company. There was just something about that 1950s two-tone style of metallic turquoise and blue galaxy, not to mention the metal details, exposed radio tubes, and leather straps. And actually, the wand company intended to make the whole thing function as it did in the game, but they experienced multiple restrictions that limited what they could do and prevented the release of any working parts. And since then, many of us have tried to make our own working upgrades, from a working screen interface to a radio, a clock, hollow tape, or data storage, and a Geiger counter. And like the wand company, they experience their own obstacles. But but their drive and their motivation has helped them to be able to create and and do things that are slightly outside of their comfort zone. And so that's what we're going to be talking about partially today is really about building, but building in the Fallout universe. So, so again, you don't have to know about Fallout uh, to be able to to be able to follow along. Uh, but uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about really more about what makes us want to make things, what makes us uh, do things, and and what makes us do them in the way that we do. When I made my version. Um, the thing that, that I was motivated for was that I wanted to be able to to make it work. I wanted it to work just like it does in the game. Uh, but I also had some rules in my mind. I mean, I, I knew that I wanted to be able to play music. I wanted to be able to play games on it, uh, things like that. But I also wanted it to be in modules, just like the company, uh, the one company was planning to do. So they, they released a radio. They were gonna be releasing also a Geiger counter and, or rad meter is what they called it, and a, and a working screen that uh, would light up and then and then flicker when you when you hit it, uh, things like that. But because of costs and and some other barriers, they weren't able to release all these modules. Uh, so I decided that I'd make something that that worked and looked like it, but did it in modules. So for that reason, everything in my mind had to fit behind this screen. Uh, that was going to be showing on the screen. And everything for the Geiger counter had to fit inside that little box. Uh, that was where my limitations, those were my barriers. And uh, part of what made me have to think outside the box uh, to be able to get things done. And today we're talking to people who similarly have their own motivations and, and some of their own limitations that, that they worked through. And so we just want to talk a little bit about some of that storyline, but also... Uh, trying to encourage people out there to to make and to create. There, there, there was a, a website in uh, called the Zavi, uh, Z A V V I, um, that uh, is a UK based uh, shop web shop that has a lot of yeah. Fallout stuff. So there wasn't there wasn't much Fallout stuff around uh, way back when. So now there's plenty of merchandise around. But you know the, the first Fallout merchandise that I got my hands on was the the bubble head and the lunchbox you got with Fallout 3. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, that was the only in-universe merchandise I could find. And I'm, I'm a big fan of in-universe in kind of stuff. Uh, so then on that website, which I frequented because uh, I, I buy lots of stuff, uh, geek stuff, um, there was uh, this, this model kit or this, yeah, this box where you could build your own Pip-Boy. And it was in-universe, like with all the... Um, yeah, it's in universe branding. It was uh, Vault Tech. It was the yeah, as if you were in the game getting this, and yeah, you're in the universe. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really liked that, and and I always like to see what other people did with it or reviews or anything. And then I stumbled upon your video, uh, even before I bought it, <laughs> to, to to take a look at it, uh, and uh, then I saw wow, and this this guy is making this this work, and uh, it's really cool. And I also think that yeah, things should be functional. Functional props are way cooler than just static props. Um, so punish thought, props too. You were also watching punish props at that time, right? Yeah. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. he he did the whole 
uh, painting bit and everything uh, back mm -hmm. then with the uh, punish props and uh, yeah that, that was very motivational i also had a for christmas i brought like the the, the cry cut cricket uh like the small vinyl cutter oh yeah me too yeah yeah, yeah. so the, the cricket joy it was called it was very locked in very small but it was cheap enough to yeah. to buy with a with a christmas gift card um and and that motivated me as well thinking that if i painted it i could make those small i thought i could make those small letters work uh yeah. so there was a lot of overlap with what i could and what i had and uh yeah just you you mentioning the 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 blackberry and uh, making it look so easy <laughs> so to say, right also, <laughs> yeah. oh you extremely easy <laughs> I, I, yeah. I ignored the big letter saying, do not try this at home. I just didn't see it. I, I don't yeah. know what happened. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I want to try it out as well. And uh, that, that's what got it started. Yeah. I so. I will say the don't try this at home. That first video, I was terrified. I, t I edited out all the, all the actual work that I did show in the third video. I edited it out because I was afraid somebody was going to do it. And it was going to catch fire. And then yeah. they'd sue me. Or, or well, I, I did actually call. punched I mean, you it's, battery. It was be something bad. Did you yeah. see? Yeah. It's yeah. it's not safe. But <laughs> no, I actually had to throw it in a bucket of sand and go to the chemical dump. To, 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 yeah. to oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The the motherboard on one of the versions, I had bent part of the motherboard, and and I didn't realize I'd done this. So I bent it right. Unfortunately, they put the indicator uh, portion is right where that arm is of the motherboard. And so I had pushed it just enough, apparently, and then I hooked it up to my computer to charge. And luckily, I was sitting next to it, and and it, something was fishy about. It. I can't remember what is was the I first noticed, but uh, oh, it was the cord. The cord that went to it to charge it was super hot. I was like, oh, why is it doing that? And it's because the part that tells it how much to draw was broken. So it was just it was just taking it all, you know. And uh, so yeah, I and I I looked at it, and the battery's like. <laughs> so, oh, uh, yeah. so yeah, I mean that was before I finished the video. So I, I yeah, it, there's a reason why I said don't try this at home. But but eventually, I mean, which is duly I also, <laughs> I, I naturally I did it multiple so, times. Yeah, yes. yeah, I did it multiple. And, and when I did it, I I also didn't know that I'd actually that it would actually I'd actually get it fully working. I just wanted to prove that it like it could be done. Yeah. And so, uh, so I didn't know if the final video was actually going to have everything done to it, but I knew somebody out there could probably do it. And so that was my main objective. So when it worked, I was very happy, but, uh, but initially, I mean, yeah, I'm with you guys. It was, it was, it was five. I think I went through James, you, you, you had one that. Uh, right it was only one right yeah so you, I, I was you lucky. Had loss of <clears throat> lucky it was only one uh yeah but yeah mine mine was also an extreme letdown <laughs> i got you but you were trying you did try to so you tried to do it this way and you also i think you looked at vince's uh rotation of the screen uh, yeah so i i originally uh thought for when i was interested in it, i i watched your videos first uh i think i watched all three parts by that time uh, I also watched uh, Punish Props as well and mm -hmm. Lightning Cosplay. Uh, mm. Lightning Pl Cosplay didn't make make uh, any drastic changes. It was just more the, the painting part of it. But mm -hmm. just all of that really motivated me to go for it. So I thought, right, well, it didn't seem... I think that's one of the issues, I guess, with your videos, that it didn't seem too difficult. And you think, right, now yeah. I can do this. <laughs> no, uh, plop in and no, done. Uh, yeah. For... It wasn't too, too hard, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> for, for, for people that are interested... Uh, it is and it isn't difficult. If yeah. if you're very motivated to try and get the end product, then you're most likely going to do it. Uh, mm -hmm. But you have to be very extremely careful with what you with what you do. So mm -hmm. I did start uh, with uh, after having seen uh, Vince's. Uh, for, it was wasn't a forum post. It was the your your, your post on how you can actually sw uh, rotate the screen or rotate the yeah. app. I thought, okay, well, yeah, with that, I don't app. actually have to take. Uh, the whole thing apart. I don't have to buy the secondary screen, etc., etc. The mm -hmm. only thing is, uh, the downside to the internals of the BlackBerry Passport, from what I could see at least, was that when you have your phone, uh, the spe this specific weight, obviously, this isn't, this isn't the BlackBerry. Right, when right. you had the the USB connector, uh, if you had it so that the screen was facing outwards as it has to, so it would have been this way. Right. Uh, 
the motherboard was just slightly too close such that the phone wouldn't fit into the plastic properly. But if you were to turn it upside down and this way, uh, which is the way right. that you eventually did it, you could shave off a slight part of the motherboard to get it to fit in there snugly. But my mm. original idea was to, oh. yes, like put it this way with the screen facing forwards and not have to break a uh, possible BlackBerry. Because I also thought, I'm not sure how long I want to keep this as like a uh, showpiece. Maybe one day I want to use the BlackBerry as an actual BlackBerry, so I didn't want to destroy it too badly. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I proceeded to break it completely <laughs> and yeah. have to buy a second one. It was yeah. no longer in one piece. <laughs> no, it was one it's piece. been too long, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> Go back it's to our an, internal joke now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I uh, I, I, I went on a trip recently. <laughs> yeah, for, for, earlier this month. Yeah. I I, uh, I went on a trip earlier this month, and and finally, I've been meaning to listen to uh, Adam Savage's book or or to read it. I don't really read many books these days, but. Uh, but I got the audio book, which is eight hours of the Everything's a Hammer. Oh, I just bought the book. Um, and did you? Yeah. I I just so I I was on a long trip. I was driving, you know, from here to to uh, Idaho, Utah area, and so I had all the hours to do it. And uh, and of course, you know, and it also helped me separate up from the kids and things. But but it was it was really good to listen to. But you know, the thing that he talked about, the thing that I felt was familiar was he talked about also having, you know, like I and I'm sure you experienced the same thing. I I came up with all these rules initially that was like I'm not going to break these. I'm not going to make anything that's too expensive. I'm going to try to make something that anybody could do. And and then the module thing. I'm trying to keep these inside the modules, and I won't I won't do anything to the actual body. I'm going to try and keep it exactly as it is, and it's going to fit inside. But like you mentioned, the board doesn't quite fit exactly. So what I ended up doing is, and you can kind of see it if you really look close right there. You can see where it bows right there. Yeah. And the reason is because I hit it with a uh, a hot gun, a heat gun. And uh, and so I could expand that, and then I took the back plate and I flattened it, so that mm. that way when I stuck that in there, I'd have enough room because I still use screws to actually uh, mount the uh, you know this part on the cup on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, so anyway, so for that reason, yeah, I I broke that rule, um, you know there, and then yeah, I also like I kind of broke. Part is all cut up. Is it? Yeah, yeah. You told yeah. me you're. So yeah, you got you're kind of starting from scratch with some things too. Which honestly, I have two of these, or three. I can't remember. Uh, the one <laughs> company sent me some parts because I, I called them up. I mean, at this point, I've talked to them a lot and stuff. So so I know different people there. But I said, can you get me these parts and this part and this and that? And they gave me those. And then I bought some parts from a smoking house that I swear they must have been like smoking straight into it because I've tried everything to get rid of that smell. Oh, like wow. all the standard stuff you normally do for plastic to get rid of that smell. Yeah. No. Like this, it's, it's, uh, I, I, laundry detergent leaves, whoo. those things. <laughs> Did you use that? I've, I've, I've what, using what? You have those, those, those leaves that uh, for the laundry detergent. Uh, they're like papers. Oh, oh. The sheets? Yeah, the sheets. Yeah, I actually... Yeah, I haven't tried that. No, that I could try that. For me with I, I did try. Stuff. Does it? Yeah. I tried like Febreze. I tried. I tried all the stuff that you soak it in. I even tried vinegar, which is you know I was worried about it changing the color. But mm. any rate, yeah, somebody somebody really liked to smoke. That's probably why they never put it together because they never had the time, uh, or <laughs> they didn't have a hand free. I don't know. But any rate, so but I did break. I also broke this rule. So so I, this. I did, I have a connector in the back. So the power, everything else has individual power. So I could take this off and it'll run on its own without any problem. This will run by itself. Mm -hmm. This will run by itself. But this has has a connector that connects in the back, a little plug. So that when I turn it on, you know, it lights up right there um, and stuff. But yeah, here, I'll show you the. Yeah, you could have I done it with the wires on the go. Tiger counter. What's I didn't. There it goes. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I thought about it. Yeah, and then there's the. Uh, can you hear the sound? Yeah. Yep. That's great. So yeah, and and that was something that honestly, the yeah was made specially for us. Uh, so the the sound I should say, 
But um, I also have a version that's an actual Geiger counter. Um, but it costs you an arm and a leg. That Geiger counter. No, it's cheap. Oh, is it? Okay. It's just it doesn't. I mean, like, who's going to carry Geigers. radiation around with them? That was yeah. the whole point. Like, yeah. why am I going to? I'm not going to go to a conference with a big thing of whatever in my pocket, yeah. which it took, you know, and when you did, you'd put it up next to it and it would be like, click, click. Yeah, yeah. it wouldn't be, click, wouldn't be click, like nothing no, impressive. Yeah. I, so, I was working on the. So, yeah, that's why I did that. <laughs> I was working on the Bluetooth low energy beacon kind of thing where you would tag stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Because uh, uh, like yeah. like the AirDrop, Apple AirDrop, like those tags or a uh, Air tag or whatever. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. Software-wise, you could get uh, certain tags that would say it would be radioactive. So I would like to have that power core, for example, that you showed earlier. Oh yeah. I would put the tag inside and then uh, yeah, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then just uh, so I can take these. And put them next to my thing, and it'll open my apps. Okay, yeah, nice. Oh. So, and it's it fits perfectly inside the bottle caps. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Those. But then it yeah. would be with the Geiger counter. Yeah. So whenever you got closer, it so would react. So, so would you do pre-recorded then stuff, or would it be telling it to, to, to like, would it be different every time kind uh, of thing? Because I, I saw some of your... Yes, I your, so, your needle is. Yeah, I had Arduino code that would generate uh, the, the sounds uh, on the speaker. Uh, and you could also uh, uh-huh. change the frequency and pitch and everything. So there's this mm. uh, this variable that's uh, maybe going to be too deep. I'm not a, I'm not a programmer. Well, I used to be one, but I, I, I never made it work. Mm. I only do proof of concept stuff with this. But there is a way to measure the, uh, uh, the signal strength coming from different tags. So that oh, that's yeah. just a simple number. So the only thing you would have to say is dial that number in uh, equals to the intensity of your Geiger counter sound. And then you have your right. Geiger counter, basically. Uh, so it would be pretty easy to program were I to know how to program that in that certain language <laughs> with that board. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. But that was a theory. Yeah. Least, to make it, well, you know, yeah. it's, you could also do, I mean, the thing that we talked about in the first video that... I couldn't figure out a way to do it though, because uh, I don't know enough about some of these things. Is is uh, doing the um, EMF, you know, mm. frequencies, yeah. which was what what they were talking about doing. Really, what the radiation meter was going to be was really more measuring. Yeah. But it's the same you know, thing. It's, it's, you just need a sensor energy. that turns that signal yeah. into something yeah. digital, and then you can just yeah. read it. Uh, because there are yeah. there are EMF sensors out there that just give you a number saying how high is something, and then you just equalize oh, yeah. it to the volume or intensity. Yeah. Well, it's easier to find that kind of radiation than it is. Yeah. yeah than t- Thankfully, <laughs> you know, going up to something that's radioactive. Yeah. Knock on wood. It's yeah. gonna stay that way. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. I I did try to do something with it, but it kept on getting the issues that I had with that kind of technology is that it. If anything around the device gets magnetized, it throws it off. Oh, yeah. Um, so even my phone's, you know, your phone has that sensor in it. Mm. Um, so, you know, even my phone sensor, I noticed, was sometimes it would start off, right, all, all of a sudden be really high. The reason was because something else in that chassis must have become magnetized. And so it screws it up at that point. Yeah, There's so, a big bolt I don't know. Zap Wizard. There is all the way from here yeah. to here. That's what threw off. I, I tried to make this thing work, and that, that was kind that of how it depends which too. version you've decided to make. Oh really? Oh really? Oh yeah. well, tell us more about I, that. I, I okay. don't. I don't. I don't have the big bolt. <laughs> oh, you don't. Okay, so tell no. us. Tell us how it works. Uh, well, seeing as uh, in this specific version, uh, you actually have because this is the same as uh, Roger Bose. Roger. Right. Rogers version. Roger Bossy. Yeah. Yeah, so my phone goes up this way, uh, which obviously, okay, sorry. Uh, and obviously mm-hmm. the the bolt on the bottom by default goes all the way through. So ah. if you were to have this default bolt, the phone wouldn't go be able to go in. So you actually need two very small bolts, uh, okay. and then the top is the exact same, so that you can. So reach it's just the... basically pinned on the two sides then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's that would actually work for my version too. That would have made some things simpler. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting to know. Okay. That's smart. I like that. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, the, that's you know, Roger. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, speaking of Roger, so so Roger's not with us today. I mean, he's not dead, but <laughs> he's, he's not he's not on this podcast right he now. But one he, piece. he was able to send me something. Uh, yeah, he's <laughs> sorry. He hasn't been affected by death note. That's no. that's right. <laughs> um, so he wrote. Uh, he actually he wrote something much more, uh, you know, more invo- involved or, or longer that I'll try and post somewhere so that uh, everyone can read it because uh, it's really well done. Um, but he mentions that the way the first thing that he had seen and and he had received actually before seeing my video, he had the illuminated display already, the one that you hit mm. uh, that uh, Chris Bernardo came up with. And Chris said when I met with Chris, that was one of the things that I mean, literally. A good sign of the wand company is that they they truly are on the side of the fans and wanting to do things for fans even when it's a loss to them. And that was true with that screen. They were determined that they wanted to release the screen, uh, even though everyone said we're not gonna we're not gonna compensate you for it or pay you for it, you know, kind of thing. I mean they really took a yeah. loss on it, but they really felt like it, they couldn't you know, so they didn't stop with release of the, release of the radio. They did get the re- radio out, but but honestly, you know, the screen was something that they released, regardless of of the fact that it put them in the hole for it. But but they still can do that radiation meter. But uh, the screen was kind of, still kind of cool. I mean, it still did things, but it was mm. it was a light behind the image, you know. And uh, so he had that, and he he felt the same way. He saw saw my video, and then he was like, "Well, that's I want that." Uh, and so, and he also, I think thought it was easier than, than it, than it was, but, uh, he also wanted to make it in such a way that, that errors would be less likely. Um, yeah. and so avoid some of those possible assembly mistakes is the way they wrote it. Um, and so he came up with his own way of doing it, which is, is the one that James followed, uh, which is, which keeps that whole thing in, in one piece. <laughs> I couldn't avoid it. <laughs> uh, that keeps it as, as we need a, you know, a counter for that. You, you didn't have to take it apart. Yeah, <laughs> man, we're gonna have to counter. keep track. So, so they, you know, they they weren't cheap phones. Um, unfortunately, you know, the BlackBerry has a following, and because even though it had been around for quite a while before we did our first video, you know, there was such a fan following. They were still going for quite a bit of money, so you know they, they could cut, they sell. They kind of today for, as well. Are they still? I mean, they could go for two to three hundred dollars. The plan was that they were going to release, you know, a new version of the yeah. same phone uh, that was five G, and uh, and the the story that I haven't shared yet is that I was actually the third Pip Boy video. The reason why it didn't come out when it was supposed to, two reasons, two of the biggest reasons was number one, I had a plan originally that I wanted to have someone from BlackBerry in the video. Um, that I Originally, I wanted them to be the ones that would officially say, look, you shouldn't take apart your BlackBerry, or something that would be kind of fun, or literally to... Because they actually had seen it, and they were actually into the build. So I was happy about that. They weren't going to sue me or anything. Um, but anyway, that was one thing. And then the other one was that I wanted to, to... People had asked me to show it to somebody and get like reaction video. And at the time, you know, this was when, uh, GameStop was the, basically the, the, in case you don't know, uh, there were people that were trying to benefit from getting GameStop essentially shut down, uh, stocks wise, improving their own stocks, uh, by basically gambling against GameStop. And then you had all these fans and people who, you know, through these smaller, uh, apps and and uh, investment opportunities uh, saved GameStop and actually even made <laughs> made it uh, do well. So I thought, well, you know, everyone's into GameStop right now too. I could go over to the GameStop. I contacted them. I got I got their PR person to say that I could actually come and show it to them and even to other people. And uh, so I had full authority from GameStop itself to do it. But then when I went over there and when I talked to managers and things like that, I went to several GameStops and all of them, the the people that worked there were, were, were not interested in being on oh. camera. Mm. So I was like, well, that doesn't work. So I took that out. And then I had um, 
yeah, I still had the BlackBerry thing, which I actually worked out. So they were going to let me interview the CEO, in fact, was going to be in the video. I had to submit in advance what my questions were, all that stuff. And uh, so that was, and that was going forward. And then all of a sudden, they emailed me one day and they said, it looks like the, it's like the weekend before or the day before the weekend or something like that. And they said, um, it looks like uh, we can't, they're not going to be able to do the interview right now. And then I said, well, can somebody else do it? And they said, well, we can't corral anybody to do it right now. And uh, and then I, I couldn't figure out why they suddenly pulled out. And it was literally like the next day that everything out in the news it came out that they weren't going to make cell phones anymore <laughs> and that they were shutting down the servers. And so so I'm guessing that was the reason <laughs> that they dropped out of it. But on the flip side, the phones I've been watching, like on eBay and stuff, I noticed that there's been they've been popping up and there has been some cheap ones. And I think that's because several people don't know how to keep it working. In fact, somebody mm. commented on a video that somebody else did about our, about our channel. They were like, well, obviously it doesn't work now because you know, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't work anymore. No, uh, very luckily it's still, so. it, it has a trick. Yeah. Takes. Yeah. It's a weird yeah. trick though. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it involves at least the one that I did was probably the same one that you did. Mm. It involves, uh, the, uh, the assistant or not the assistant, yeah, the, 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 the voice assistant. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And and it gives you the option to be able to turn off this upgrade, uh, so so yeah, then you don't have it trying to trying to get you to set up the phone all oh, the time, uh, <laughs> which then really ruins your ability to use it. So we've got it where yep, that's it actually working right there. And one of my favorite things about this too is when you push on the black button on the top that I that I have on the top, I can say, let's see, it's hard to do from the back. I'm watching the screen on the front. There we go. Then I can say. Open Pip Boy app. Oh, it's Fallout Pip Boy app, isn't it? Oh, I didn't turn on the sound either. That part's funny. Instead of uh, instead of it making the sound that goes bleep, when it turns on, it goes blah, 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 like it's turning off because it's made in China. Uh, but anyway, because <laughs> you turn it so, all backwards. Yeah, <laughs> That's, it's the way that. It's the way that it works. And I bought another one as a backup, and I thought, well, maybe it was just that one. And nope, they all. Oh, because they yours is flipped the other way around. The wrong Jeremy, that's why. Oh, is it? Oh, uh, for you no, guys. No, no, you, you have to. <clears throat> do I have the no, screen backwards? That was a bad joke. You you have the screen backwards, right? <laughs> oh yeah, so yeah. That, that's why it's doing it. <laughs> so it's different. Turned. There you go. <laughs> it's the most logical yeah. answer. Well, I actually got my. Uh, yep. um, blackberry passport in a bulk deal on ebay from the uk yeah did you and i now am the proud mm. owner of mm. 28 blackberries in different uh, <laughs> states of, uh, yeah, of different yeah. types i think i have the whole set i did yeah. that too yeah i also bought a, a, a uh it's yeah. called a lot so if you want to type in uh blackberry lot yeah you'll probably find a bunch of broken ones and honestly for the purpose of this build you don't need a working no. screen so, in majority of cases, that's probably what's wrong with whatever the broken one is, uh, or that, or else somebody else punctured their battery. I don't know, but uh, you know what I mean. Like, mm. it's uh, ooh, did that come from my? Um, but at the same time, yeah. It's, so for that reason, I can use one that's in pretty bad condition because the way I did my build, I got the cheapo screen, and I'm putting it on the opposite side, so. Mm. For most phones, that'll work. So if you get if you get a ten dollar BlackBerry Passport, I mean, what's the loss there? You know, you take it apart, see if it works. Yeah. You know, throw on the new screen and go from there. And they are still Just making screens. Be careful screens. with the screen that you use. Yeah, yeah. Well, and if it pops up, don't pops off. Don't try popping it back on while it's still turned on. That's how I ruined one of the other. <laughs> Just ones. generally don't don't like do it off <laughs> reactively i quickly it's like one of those things where you just you're not thinking it pops off and you're like oh no and then you pop it back on and you smell the smell of uh electronics and oh yeah, yeah. Well, failure there's the, that's what the smell was that's what smell failure smells like is is chinese electronics uh <laughs> so yeah yeah the, you know the smell yeah, yeah. that's it <laughs> but at any rate so so yeah that's I mean, that's the thing is, is I think, I think you can always find something. I mean, even when there's no blackberries around, 
you can find some way to make what you're trying to make. There's some way to make something work. Um, and then it comes down to your flexibility and, and your rules. Do you, do you guys find that you have rules when you go into doing a build? Like, do you have certain things that you're like, these are the things that I'm going to stay within or I'm, I'm really well, aiming for. I or learned over the years more like flexible what, what Dave from Toy Poloi also has called Wabi Sabi, which is uh, that there's beauty okay. in the imperfections. That's that's basically the, the, the hand of the artist that you see reflected. Um, mm -hmm. So most of my projects end up becoming pre-weathered before I finish them because I'm just impatient oh, yeah. or just clumsy <laughs> or yeah. it, 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 it always looks very grungy, very real. And those cuts are real. Yeah. Those scrapes are real because <laughs> I just mishandled yeah. it while I'm making it. Um, and I learned to accept that yeah. because it also, you know, adds story to it. Um, so for me, ideally in my mm. mind and in my heart, I would like to have a pristine product that would be like off the factory, like it would be perfect, and like mm. no duct, no duct tape, no right. no expensive smoke, uh, and um, <laughs> duct tape. It never happens. Ever, something always goes wrong, and and yeah. I've learned to accept that. Uh, so one of my rules is, yeah, just, you know, go with it and, and keep on going till it's done. Because mm -hmm. until you're done, you're not having something in your hands or near you that you're satisfied with. So keep on going till you're mm -hmm. done, because at least then you have that product. Uh, like, I'll, I'll keep it short, but uh, yeah. my wife, for example, I, I was building my own 3D printer uh, from scratch. So oh, yeah. uh, I cut the frame on a laser cutter. I uh, ordered the motors from China, the original manufacturer from the Prusa Mark III. Uh, and that one wasn't even on oh, the yeah. market yet because of uh, supply issues. So I was building it out of the manual and just, you know, writing down a bill of materials. Mm -hmm. And at one moment I was like, yeah, I'm going to stop because it's never going to happen, never going to do it. It's going to be more expensive than building the kit itself, than, you know, doing it from scratch. And my wife said, well, don't stop yeah. now because if you keep on going, in the end, you'll have a 3D printer instead of just parts. And that's yeah. become my mantra going forward saying that, uh, yeah, well... I, I have the parts for a pip boy that could potentially work. If I stop now, I just have parts. I don't have mm -hmm. a pip boy. Uh, and, and, and that's one of the rules that yep. I live by now is that even though the project might be stalled for now or you don't have enough skills to go further with it, um, put it in a box, close yeah. it, you know, get it out of your mental system if it's, if it's really something you're stuck on, but never give up and, and try again later once you've matured. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Like one, the 100%. Yeah, like the toy play, you know, situation and and other things that we've done. Honestly, anything can be like you can make you can make a part if you break it. You know, if you're flexible yeah. enough about it. Uh, you know, if you can you can you can always go back and try something again. I I would say the thing about my failures is that it always turns out to be a better product because I made those failures, you know what I mean? Uh so they weren't really failures, but I mean, like you make the errors, you you quickly learn what you're not going to do again, but you also might learn something that's you know that works, and and so yeah, as long as you keep pushing forward, that's it's true. I think Chris said something about you don't, you can't, you can't, you can't get mad at other people uh, for not turning something out if you're not willing to try it yourself. So, you know, mm. I mean, that's, that's the thing. So yeah, you, you give it, a, you give it a go and you lose a Blackberry in the process, but she's probably still got the parts somewhere. Don't you, James? <laughs> oh yeah. No, no. I've, yeah. I still I've got, got a my box parts. with my failures. Do you? Yeah. It's the way to be. Yeah. 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 It, I mean, some things still work probably, it's, but you know. No, but it, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, as you say, when the moment that I broke my first Blackberry with the project, uh, I did decide to, as, as Vin said, like, give it like put it in a box just give it a while and and not be so disheartened by it uh, mm -hmm. and just try and recover mm -hmm. but uh as soon as i i did leave it for a while uh i one day just decided right well i want to try and continue with this i investigated more blackberry phones i looked at i i, I continued watching your videos in the background like mm -hmm. over and over and over just to see where i went yeah, wrong and way. how i could improve it and um and then eventually just saw a BlackBerry, which I thought was recent, uh, like reasonably priced, and thought, well, let's try it again. And yeah. then, luckily, that was the last attempt I needed. Yeah. Patience is... The, I, I mean, so if you see... I made a second video, and the, which didn't do... A, I don't think I... 
did anything too new, but I did show the scenes of when I failed a couple times where it literally shows me as after I did it, standing up and going to turn off the lights and stuff. And the thing, mm. the reason why I looked depressed and the only thing that really got to me wasn't so much the, I mean, I knew I could try it again. The hard thing was I knew now yeah. I had to wait. Like I couldn't do the next step yeah. now. I, I have to wait to find it, to order it, to sh- for it to be shipped and then get it, which as soon as I get it, guaranteed that thing's coming out of the box and going right in. But at the same time, yeah. like something about that time, which was good to have, but at the same time, you know, that was the thing that was going through my mind. So at the same time, the way that I got those other Blackberries, I didn't like fail and then buy another Blackberry, fail, buy another Blackberry. Again, it's not really failures, but after the first one, I was like, okay, I got, I'm going to do two screens. I'm going to do two phones. <laughs> and if I can't, you know, if I don't need both, yeah. I'll resell it. But I am. I'm not gonna. Fi- I'm not gonna have this happen again. And then, and then you call have to the wait CEO again. for an infinite so, supply so, just know. to make sure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, should have pulled from it. Why had the chance? Yeah. What? You're not making them anymore? Yeah. Send them my way. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> it's all good. They should. They should have sent you the purchase oh, yeah. type. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I get people too that tell me all the time. I mean, as far as the being willing to wait, kind of like what you were talking about, is I get people that make the comment, well. You know, this is three hundred and fifty dollars where I am. And two, two things, it, they also will say, "Well, they only want to get a new one." Like that's, you're going to get a new BlackBerry yeah, a and destroy it. Like yeah, why? Yeah. Why is that? And then the second thing is, they're looking at what's maybe online that day. But I mean, really, like, like I mean, if you watch and you can be patient, guaranteed something's going to pop up. I, same thing with finding people are always asking, "Well, how, how can I get one of those reasonably priced the Pip Boy Kit itself?" And I bought, mm. like I said, I bought, I bought a couple since, and and a box too, the red box, uh, since, for reason, I mean, like forty bucks, whatever, because I watch and I watch and, and you're willing to buy the portion, yeah. partial kit, things like mm. that. I mean, like if you can be flexible, things can work out. But yeah, uh, it's just patience. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because I with probably any project. Yeah, I spent a few weeks like looking for the the correct uh pit boy 2000 kits wondering if i should go with a full mm. model uh and not go through the whole experience of making it and then i thought no i want to oh, make it the and pre-assembled then, version yeah, yeah i i was going to go with that like just for cost effectiveness but then i thought yeah. the whole part or the fun part of it is making it so even if yeah. it's like 20 in my case 20 euros more it's it's yeah. really worth it didn't the pre-assembled though come with the radio and the screen installed too or am i wrong I, about that was it just it a depends. shell i, I think i don't remember. know i think i, I think, think it was also one off in the Bethesda shop that they had and i i do i do wish i i would have got okay. that uh, red rocket one uh that would yeah that, that's that's yeah yeah that was a good paint job out of Danium, yeah, it was it. expensive yeah. as hacky also but uh yeah but uh, yeah, we have like uh, this, this, this thing called Marketplace. I think it's even owned by eBay now. It was a Craigslist uh, equivalent here. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I just have a search right. uh, search query saved that says Fallout Pip Boy and everything Pip Boy related pops up. I get a message saying, hey, someone is selling uh, their Pip Boy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? So have I you bought, seen my some My second stuff one that up was pre built, I bought for like, I don't know, 50 bucks or something. Uh, and. And then I found a, yeah. a, a like great? a really dodgy yeah, store reasonable. that uh, had nothing to do with Fallout or Geek stuff that only had the radio <laughs> module for twenty five yeah. euros. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna buy this. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, that's what yeah. it went for when and, it and, sold and, originally. And, I mean, that's if you look perfect. at it now, it's yeah. it's expensive as heck. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, 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 yeah. no. It's impossible. Well, that brings us to the uh, speaking of yeah. which, I mean, holotapes. Now you, Vince, just reached out for a holotape, but honestly, have you looked at what people are trying know, to lot, sell their holotapes for? Because I think they were like, f- I think I got mine. Yeah. Some mine were like five dollars. I know yeah, that they, they were had like some that were fifteen and collectible point, but, things. But I mean, like, like you know, they they wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. On the flip side, these, yeah, they 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 people are. I, so if you go on eBay, you what? will see them being sold for hundred bucks. <laughs> Actually, wow. I saw one for three hundred dollars. No. I don't see anyone buying them, you but have people some obviously honestly think that they get that. It. Yeah, I guess. I, yeah. The, here's the card and stuff like that. I mean, that's you know, insane. but at the same time, yeah, yeah, that's ridiculous. People that oversell stuff yeah. uh, is, 
or people that go to places like uh, here in the U.S., Target does a lot of special release things like that mm-hmm. Ecto-1, the Plasma series uh, I did recently. And before it even came out, it was sold out because yeah. people knew it was going to be something. So they went yeah. online and they purchased them all up through through Target. And then you go onto eBay and they were selling them for three hundred dollars. It's like that's not worth three hundred dollars, but there's no way to get it unless you paid this exorbitant amount. The people like that scalping should be, isn't it? I, I think probably it's should say it is scalping. Yeah, yeah, it is truly. Yeah. So 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 not cool. Like I like the idea of only being able to obtain one thing, like uh, playstations or whatever else. Like, or, yeah. or I guess it was the. Uh, the Steam what Deck. was it? The, the Steam Deck. Steam Deck, that, that was. Yeah. Did you guys buy your, your nope. s- spot in line? Did I'm you... contemplating oh. doing it still. Are you? I'm hoping I paid for down a the $5, version. but I never got it. Yeah. No? No, I got the email saying I could purchase it, and, and I turned it down. I guess I get a, have that $5 now in my, oh, yeah. like in the Steam like mm. I could purchase something the else Steam on Steam. But well, back then, yeah, I didn't even I, uh, commute, so I don't know. I was like, uh, I'm working from home. Why do I need a Steam Deck when I can sit behind my PC? Oh, and, uh, yeah. Now I, wa- yeah. I now I listen to our yeah. podcasts. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. you go. See, that? Yeah, you yeah. need a Steam Deck just to listen, listen to, to your something. Things. <laughs> That's pretty good. Did Are you interested? Have you guys tried making the, uh, the active holotape, the one that works? Not yet, no. It's, it's that is the easiest build. It's easiest. It's the cheapest. It's the thing I was the most proud of when I got done with it, uh, because it works and it and it gets you all excited when it works. It was the but wireless the parts SD card. Yeah, wasn't it? yep. So you got a wireless SD card. You've got a three point six milliamp uh, battery. You've got a uh, controller. Uh, that's a uh, Arduino or um, yeah, Arduino controller. Mm-hmm. Is that it? And some wires, you know, mm-hmm. and which you don't have to put it into one of these. I actually even created a file that people could print that might be safer because this and, is and they're worth yeah, fit. they're worth a hundred dollars. Yeah, and it's a hundred dollars. <laughs> Not to mention, I mean, yeah, I don't want anyone blowing up a battery either trying to stuff it into a holiday because it doesn't it doesn't fit. You do have to go in and drumble it out a little bit, but but you know. Yeah, cheap, easy, fun, good project on the weekend. There you go. And or when a you couple get done of with them. it, it connects. Yeah, I think it's it's fun. To, oh yeah, oh you do have one other thing. A read switch is up here, so you put a magnet near it. It connects and it yeah. turns on, and it stays. I have not charged this since before I made that video, and it's still charged. So if I put it into the Pip Boy, it will connect nice. um, automatically, and it's fun. It's a fun project. So, yeah. So, if you come up with other ways, uh, like Zap Wizard, if you want to check out somebody that does a lot of holotape yeah. and and I've, builds, I've, if you're going to do the 3000 version, Zap Wizard. I've seen lots yeah. of Zap Wizard uh, stuff. I'm following on the, the yeah. RPF because I'm extremely interested in his project. Like, building it from, from nothing. Yeah. It's also like his... Uh, the radio that he was making that was yeah. also a very interesting project. But yeah, I'm he he emailed me the other day because he found he found a, uh, a the the um, Geiger Geiger Mueller tube. Yeah, he found a really good Geiger Mueller tube, and he's like, "This is the one, and it's on sale, and you should get it." And I'm like, "Now I'm not interested in getting any Geiger Mueller. <laughs> I'm done with that project, but maybe I should. I don't know." Because uh, I think there was like three left on this thing, and so, so yeah. I, but yeah, he's 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 a uh, engineer, bucks, so it's yeah, right. Not a... <laughs> if you've enjoyed this podcast and want more, stay tuned for that. But also check out our channel, join the community on YouTube that goes by the same name, Your Geek Fix. Be sure to check out Vince on Twitter at MassiveDMG underscore and on his YouTube channel, MassiveDMG. Check out James at MrMalto4 on Instagram and the Replica Prop Forum. We also want to hear from you, so be sure to send your questions, stories, and other projects to yourgeekfix at gmail.com. In the meantime, this has been your Geek Fix. <laughs>